In this photogrammetry, photocatch, and 3D modeling tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take your model that you scanned in photocatch and then export it so you can use it in a 3D modeling program like Blender or Maya and then create animations. I'll also show you how you can clean up your mesh from your 3D body scan that you used PhotoMesh for. So for example, here we have our scan. And if you want to see more about scanning an object, go ahead and see the previous video. In the free version of PhotoCatch, in the export tab, we have a few file formats. USDZ, which is an Apple format for augmented reality and different things like that. We also have a legacy OBJ format and apply format, which instead of a mesh exports a point cloud. I'm going to recommend for modeling in Blender and Maya that you export an OBJ. Then we have a choice of whether we want to export the original file or just the OBJ. I also recommend exporting the original file. This will create other texture maps besides diffuse. Diffuse is the color of the 3D model, but this will also have normal and roughness maps. Normal is physical texture on top of the model, similar to a bump map. And then roughness shows how shiny or not shiny your model is supposed to be. So make sure you check this, then we'll click export. Then navigate to the folder that you're going to export and label your export. Now we have everything exported from PhotoCatch and we can go ahead into Blender. Once we're in Blender, we want to go to File, Import, and we're gonna select Wavefront OBJ. Navigate to the folder that has your mesh and then select the baked mesh. Once it's in Blender, it will come in very small. So we can select the default cube, press X to delete it. Then we need to orientate this. I find the best way is to click on Z. So we look straight down at the model. Then we can press R, then Z to lock to the Z axis and then rotate in the Z direction. Then click on X. We'll do the same thing. We're gonna press R, X to lock to the X axis. And now our figure is standing straight. And then we're gonna click on Y and we'll press R, Y to rotate on the Y axis. Once we have it pretty close, we'll press G, then hold Shift and Y, and we can move our figure right up to the origin. The next thing to do is to scale our model. So to do that, we can scale just as normal by pressing S, but this doesn't keep it at the origin. So if instead you select the 3D cursor, we can scale up with the 3D cursor, but how big should it be? A good way to do this is to bring in a reference image. So I'll bring in a cube. I'll press G, Z, one to move the cube up. Then I'm gonna go into the item panel and I'll make the cube the height of this person. So I'll go 1.93 meters. And so now looking right to the side here, I can move the cube down to the right height. And then I can click this figure and if I press S, it will scale from the origin right to the approximate correct size. Then I can delete my scaling cube. Now we need to clean up this mesh a little bit. So there's a few things that we can do. We can delete some of these objects here. And an easy way to do that is use the sculpt mode. So click your object, then click sculpt. And then you can use the various sculpt tools to update your mesh. So if you want to knock some of this in, this will pull it out. And then if you hold the control key, you can push these pieces of the mesh into where you want. And you can continue to refine the mesh as much as you want, change the strength, and this will help clean up your mesh for animation and what you wanna do. Since this is a low res 3D scan, we don't have to do too much of this but it is a good, a good way to clean up your mesh. Then I can come down here and I can click smooth and I can smooth that out so it doesn't have such a tight um, pattern on the mesh. We can come in and do other types of objects. So we could draw sharp here on the top of the face. So we can click in here and draw in parts that we want to cut in so we can make the nose a little bit more defined. We can make the lips more defined. Just little things that will help. We can come up along the hairline and add some detail here. You can go as crazy as you want, but the whole point of 3D scanning is so you don't have to do a lot of this. Uh, so we can give it a little bit more definition around the shirt there. And if you see any 
types of objects that just shouldn't be there, you can go fix those as well. So we could smooth out the arm. So for example, right here, I may just want to go smooth that out. Nice and easy. Smooth this out, smooth this out. And you can go around your mesh and find different parts that you want to clean up. There's many different sculpting tools and you can use those to your heart's content to clean up your mesh. So once we have that cleaned up with sculpting, we still have to often remove parts that got into the scan. For example, here we have this rotating platform. So how do we remove that? We could use the sculpting, but I think it's better to actually go into edit mode. So I'm gonna go back to object mode, select this mesh, then I'll go to edit mode. Now I can see all of the vertices, and I think it's easiest to stay in vertex mode, to click and hold this top selection tool, then get the select circle. Now what I wanna do is separate this as quickly as possible to other meshes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint with the circle tool around the foot. I can separate it from the bench, press X and then delete vertices. Then I can rotate around and I can, the circle tool here, paint around the foot, press X and delete vertices. We can continue to do this by going around the object and painting the vertices. If you notice here that I got onto the foot, just go and reselect, then press X, delete vertices. So here we can get onto the side of the foot and then press X, delete vertices. Then we can go onto the part of the foot right here, press X, delete vertices. Then around this part of the foot, X, delete vertices. Come around this back foot here, X, delete vertices. And eventually if I press L, right now it's still connected. So we need to find out where it is still connected to the mesh. So right here, it's still connected. And we press X, delete vertices. And we can come around here and try L again. It is still connected somewhere along the path. So once it's totally not connected, you can press L and delete just the extra part. So for right, example, right here, it's connected, delete vertices. Eventually you can separate the two and then you don't have to paint this out. You could paint all that out yourself, but I find it easier just to delete that as a separate mesh. And then we can come in here and we can delete these vertices to clean this up. X, delete vertices. And we can also, so if I select these edges, I press F, select these edges, press F. It fills that in. And for what we're doing, we can go in and knife cut that up, but I think that's fine. We can also click right here and press F, fill those in. So you can go around and fill in parts of your model and clean it up that way. We can also simplify our model by decimating it, but I think it's simplified enough. The other thing we want to do is potentially add in our textures and fix our textures. So if we go to Material Preview, we'll see that we have textures here, but we have a lot of green in our texture. So we could do it two different ways. I'll show you a way with Photoshop and I'll show you a way with Blender. So remember that in our texture file, we have this base color and it's actually just a PNG image. So we can go ahead and go see this image in our folder. So I'll go ahead and open that in Photoshop. So here I have the texture of our image and I also have a roughness texture and a normal texture. We'll talk about those in a second, but first let's go ahead and look at the image texture. So I'll open that with Photoshop. What I wanna do is just quickly get rid of the green. So I'm going to go to image adjustments, selective color. And then what I can do is just go ahead and pick greens and then crank up the magenta, put it on absolute and add in 100% magenta. I can do that again, image, adjustments, selective color, select the greens, crank up the magenta and press okay. And I think with this image, I'm gonna do that one more time. So I'm gonna go image, adjustments, selective color, crank up the greens, add magenta. And this time I may lower the cyan, lower the yellow just a little bit, add in some black and press okay. And I'm gonna save the PNG. You could tweak this more and go in there and really remove all the green, but that's a quick way to do that. Then we'll go back to Blender. Now in Blender, it's still using the old image, so we'll make sure that it is uh, refreshed. So we'll go ahead into shading. If you don't notice that the, the it is updating, go ahead and just 
re-select the image and then you'll have that image. So here we have a lot less green on the pants. So while we're in the shading mode with these textures, you'll notice that the image texture is going to the base color. The roughness map is going to the base color. If it's already connected, that's great. But notice that the roughness map is sRGB. It should be non-color. So it definitely works. And then what we also want to do is add in a normal map. So we can press Shift A. Then we can search for texture image right here. We'll open a file and we'll select the normal map. Then what we need to do is make sure this is also non-color and we need one more node. So we'll press Shift A, then we'll search and we'll type normal and we'll get normal map. Then we can drag the color from the normal map. We can select here the UV map and then we can drag this to normal. Now this doesn't change a lot, but it does give just a little bit more definition and detail. If you had a more high definition scan, this would be an essential part of the workflow. So now let's go back to layout and we can see our mesh here, but we can still have a lot of green. And so we can correct a lot of those things. So we can click on texture paint. And once you're in texture paint, you'll notice that we have three different maps. This is the roughness map. So it shows the roughness of the different features and what should be shiny and not shiny. The normal map shows bumps and things that should be on there. And then the baked mesh. So you want to make sure you select the correct texture. And then I can zoom in and I can paint right on this baked mesh. So if I have a bunch of green right here, I can come down here to my brush and I can select a dark color. I can turn the strength down and then I can turn the radius up a bit. And then I can just paint over where I think that it shouldn't be green. So I can do that also on the arms and anywhere I think that the image still has too much green. So I can just paint over that and then that'll be corrected for, so I don't have so much green in there. And if you make it a little bit smoother and take your time painting, you can do that. You can do this also on the arms here. So I can pick a color that's close to what we want, something over in the red area, and then just paint on there to get rid of that green. If you put too much on, then you can always undo that and use the color picker to get more close. You can also smudge things. So sometimes this is really helpful. So I'm gonna get my brush a little bit smaller and sometimes it's helpful. I can just drag the previous color down into there and I can turn the strength down so it's not as smudgy. So sometimes that's a good way to work. Be careful that you also smudge from the other side so you can see how that pulls that color that way. So you can clean these meshes up pretty well. But again, the point of scanning this way is to have something that works quickly and easily, so super fast. So once you're happy with everything, it's now time to prepare our mesh for export and then eventually rigging. We want to double check to make sure everything is straight. So I'll look at the Z axis one more time. And I think I'm gonna rotate it just a little bit to get those feet right. So I'm gonna press R, Z, and just make sure the feet are rotated. So now I have everything ready to go and I need to export it. So we're going to use different rigging software and I think it's good to have it as an FBX so it has all your textures and everything in one file. So we'll go ahead and go to File, then we'll go Export and we'll select FBX. So here's where we have our mesh. And I'll label this, I'll label it cleaned up for rigging. I'll export my FBX. And now I'm ready to go ahead and rig my file. Hopefully this helps you clean up an exported 3D body scan from PhotoCatch in Blender.